AWS Lambda and DynamoDB are the two most common serverless offerings in AWS. Now these Lambda functions can be triggered based on an event that could be like server reaching to a capacity or, um, or something happened within AWS environment or it can be time bound as well. Now, what is serverless actually means? What are some of the common use cases of AWS Lambda? What are limitations of this AWS Lambda? We're going to cover in this first part of a two-part video series where I'm going to bring an AWS expert and she's going to talk about all these things. Now, the second part of this series, we are going to actually use this AWS Lambda to actually create a Lambda function and then use it to stop or restart a EC2 instance, which is one of the most common use cases that companies want for that to be stopped, for example, in the evening or restart a machine when machine hangs or different use cases you can do. So we're going to build that use case in the second part of this video series. Now these videos have been taken from our live instructor training. So you might hear some references uh, about the training, so ignore them, but um, so, later in the towards end i'm also going to we are actually going to implement that so we'll give you instructions to create a free account on aws so you can you can play with that if you don't have already have an account as well so the link to that video on create a free account should be below this and a lot more about instructions about aws lambda will be or aws lambda will be below uh, this uh, video in the description section or the comment section as well uh, so with that let's look at the about or let's talk about what this serverless and AWS Lambda is. Serverless computing in Amazon. So when we say serverless, serverless never means that there are no servers. Servers are there, but they are being managed by Amazon. So the servers which are being fully managed, provisioned and scaled as per the requirement by AWS, that service is called as serverless computing you can build and run your application without worrying about the servers because the servers in the background are being managed by aws like we have seen the sqs simple queuing service in that whatever amount of storage and whatever amount of compute which is required is taken care by aws i just create the queue and I access it by URL. In the background, the storage and the compute which is required is taken care by AWS. So that's why we called it as serverless. Another example, DynamoDB. We are not worrying about the, you know, EC2 instance on which this database was created. When we create DynamoDB, we just create the table. We mention how much read capacity units I want, how much write capacity units I want. In the background, where my table content is getting stored, so the storage, the compute which is required is automatically taken care by Amazon. I don't have to worry about the server which is working in the background. If I want more write capacity units and more read capacity units, I will quickly scale it up. The, the RCUs and the WCUs. In the background, the server which is required to support me for that is being managed by AWS. So such services are known as serverless offerings by Amazon. These services scale as per the usage automatically. You do not have to configure the auto scaling for them. You will not provision any servers no EC2 instances are required to be provisioned by you and you will never pay when it is idle. If you are not using the service, you are not paying for it. That is the biggest benefit that you have. It will have less components in your environment. So less infrastructure concept when it comes, then you should go for the managed and serverless services. One of the biggest talked about topic of town for serverless offerings in Amazon is Lambda. So what is Lambda basically? Lambda are functions. In this, you will be able to create functions in Lambda. These functions will be performing some task. Some task definitions are written over here. So you can run this particular code which you have created at function 
in lambda on the basis of a trigger which is actually an event so in the response of a event you will execute this code this code will be loaded on the managed servers of amazon it will be executed the result will be delivered and again this function will go back to the memory only the storage is there which is getting consumed you can write a code and can save it as lambda function and then you can trigger it as and when required like suppose say for an instance i have a requirement where i have got ec2 instances in my environment these ec2 instances are required to be restarted every night 12 in the night my instances should be restarted that is what the requirement of my application is so either i will do it manually or otherwise what will i do is i will write a function to restart the ec2 instance instance i will even mention the instance ids of these two instances only in my function code and i will then create a time based trigger and in this time based trigger at 12 in the midnight this function will be triggered this function will be loaded on the managed servers from there this will get executed which will in turn restart these two servers and again the function will go back to sleep mode so you do not have to keep a server up and running so as to do this task of restarting it is just the code that you will write and put it dormant in the memory this code will be sleeping all the time till the trigger is there once the trigger is there this code will be triggered loaded onto the servers the servers which are managed servers of amazon there the task will be executed the task written in this program is to restart these servers so these servers will be restarted and this program will again go to sleep mode that is what your lambda functions are event driven codes can be there the event could be a activity based event or it could be a time based event that means at a certain time the trigger will be there it could be like that or maybe like when the cpu utilization of my ec2 instance is going beyond 70% then restart the server very stupid solution but just letting you know that you can do that so it could be a event based trigger when the cpu is going beyond the limits then the trigger will be invoked and the lambda function will be called this is how your lambda works no servers to manage scale as and when required and you will be billed as per sub second billing millisecond billings is there you will be billed as per a bunch of 100 milliseconds suppose say the, your lambda function took 250 milliseconds to get executed so you will be charged for 300 milliseconds for it so it is not per second billing also it is per millisecond billing per 100 millisecond billings which is being done so very cost effective till the time your function is running it is executing till the time the code is getting executed is what you are being charged for once your code is back to sleep no charge for keeping the function so it can be used with any of these services like suppose say a time based trigger for backup 
a time based trigger when somebody uploads an object in the bucket as soon as the object is uploaded it is an event based trigger as soon as the object is uploaded in the bucket some task is required to be performed maybe i when i have uploaded a picture in this bucket this picture has to be resized in three different sizes so that it can be uploaded on my website at multiple pages a page which has been designed for desktop a page which has been designed for mobile a page which has been designed for tablet so i will resize this picture in three different sizes and will upload it to another bucket from where the website guys can take this picture for usage so as soon as the picture is uploaded the lambda function will be triggered it will resize the picture in three different sizes and in a certain different format and will upload it to another bucket from where my develop website developer may pick up it so swf and lambda combining together to deliver the result so the swf will define the workflow and the lambdas will execute the tasks so they will act as the worker nodes the lambda functions will act as workers and there will be a decider in swf who will be actually executing the task okay so if you see the use case scenarios of the lambda function it could be used in data processing app backend development control systems serverless websites security updates it can be used anywhere i have given you some simple examples of lambda function restarting the server on an event restarting the server on a schedule whenever someone uploads a object in the bucket you can do some task or maybe you can even you know there is an queue s q s as soon as the message is delivered in the queue a notification should be sent to the server so you can write a event based trigger which will the event will be message delivered in the queue so as soon as that event is done you can write up a lambda function to execute some task on that message and deliver it to the server so it's not the server which is polling it is an event based trigger associated with the queue which will pull the message from the queue it will do certain task on that message and then it will forward it to the server okay if you think about the limitations of your lambda function then the only limitation that is restricting over here is this the maximum execution duration per request 900 seconds so your message which is being used or your request which is trying to get processed via the lambda function the maximum size of execution or the maximum time of execution can be of 15 minutes your execution one execution request cannot be for more than 15 minutes so if there is a backup task that can be executed within 15 minutes then only you can use the lambda functions for triggering that backup otherwise not how many concurrent connect uh, executions of one single lambda functions are possible 1000 concurrent executions are possible if you have got a deployment package in lambda then the maximum size could be 250 mb not more than that and if you have got multiple such lambda functions in a region then the maximum could be 75 gb on the lambda not more than this so these are the limitations which are there for your lambda well that was our aws expert talking about aws lambda now as i said at the start um in the second part of this video series we are actually going to pick up this lambda we could actually create that function and then we'll use that function to start and stop our ec2 instance which is nothing but a virtual machine so for that you need to prepare a few things 
So make sure you have a free AWS account or free or paid AWS account. If you don't have the links uh, to how to create that in step-by-step -step guide and video should be below this. And maybe also we'll put this in the playlist so that you can see that uh, how to create an account video as well on this. Second thing is that if you're watching this seven days later when it's published, the next video should already be populated for you. We're also going to show you how to create IAM policies that can trigger this or act on that EC2 instance as well. With that, this is Atul from Team K2 Academy. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you next week. Uh, but don't forget to look at the description. We'll, we'll be giving those instructions. So we'll see you. Also, if you need any other things like that or videos like that or instructions like that, do let us know so we can publish and create and publish those videos for you. All the best and good luck.